Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am P. Jaworski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in the sixth video tutorial on object oriented PHP, I want to introduce you to interfaces. They're very similar to abstract classes with a couple very serious caveats. Uh, now, before we do that, you'll notice I'm over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. Here you can purchase my tutorial series as I develop them and post them online for sale. Each sale goes to help me to continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support thus far. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20, please just leave a thumbs up or a comment on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated and go to promote these video tutorials for others. Now, with that said, I'm going to go over to localhost OOP tutorial five, uh, user object. I guess there's tutorial five. I might have said tutorial six in the introduction, but we're at tutorial five. Now, you'll see I'm just writing two words here. Hello and bonjour. Sorry for butchering my French. What I wanna do here is I wanna show you what an interface is versus what an abstract class is and what the key differences are. In order to do that, I have a very simple example of the users again. Uh, the idea being that we can have users that are English and French, and each object would have a greeting. So uh, in English, you would return hello, and then in French, you would return bonjour. Now, um, that said, this is a case where we want to make sure that the method is implemented specifically for the different type of user. So an English user would print their greeting in English, a French user would print it in French, Spanish in Spanish, and so on. With an abstract class, there's no way that you can require that. You'll see that I've got abstract class, I've defined the function and it returns hello. And in English, that's fine, I can override it. In French, I can override it. But if somebody forgets to override it, there's no error throwing at them saying, hey, you should have overridden this, what's going on? And this is where you can introduce some bugs in your system. What we really need is a way to create some type of contract with an, another developer so that when they go to use our, our, our class, they have to implement the method and they have to do it um, however they want to, but they have to implement it. And that's where an interface comes into play. So what we do here is instead of declaring this as an abstract class, what we do is, let's just take out this line entirely, you're going to type in interface and then you're going to give it a name. So I'm giving mine user um, and that's going to be the interface name itself. An interface is, is like a class, but it's not because you can't instantiate it. And now, whereas I before could actually define a greeting, if I save this, and I reload my page, you'll see that I get an error that when you define an interface, the method bodies can't actually have anything in them. Um, you can't define anything. You have to leave the implementation entirely to the end user or the other person who's going to be using this. So you do that. Um, I think it's the open curly braces. Nope. Doesn't want open curly braces. How you do it is you close it off with a semicolon. So you define your function and there we go. So now what error I'm getting is that I can't extend from an interface. That's the, another change you have to make. So in, in the English class, where I have class English extends user, extend refers to an abstract class or extending some other class. Um, because the interface isn't necessarily a class, you have to take out the extends and type in implements. And the same thing for our French. And now if I reload the page, you'll see that I get the same greeting. Now where this becomes really powerful, because I know you might be thinking, why would I want to do that? You know, in most cases, um, it can become a little bit tedious. And what if you don't want to do it? Um, what becomes pretty powerful is let's take the uh, example of a utility class. So in this utility class, all that I'm doing is I'm saying, let's greet somebody. So I've got function greeting and I'm telling it, it's going to receive a user. And on that user, you're going to call greeting. Now, remember the user is actually an interface and whatever extends it has to have the greeting method. So here I'm not actually saying you're going to get English. You're going to get French. I'm saying you're going to get something that is a child of that is related to it. So, it knows that it can call the greeting. So that's pretty powerful, right? We don't know if we're going to get English, we're going to get French, it doesn't matter, but we know that we can call greeting. And so as a result, when we reload this, you'll see here, 
I'm getting hello and I'm getting bonjour based on the actual object that is passed in here from the utility class, right? And so what our, our PHP file actually looks like is create a utility class, create an English, create a French, and then just call the greeting on that. And we can make this even more abstract, even cooler. Um, we're gonna get, we're not gonna take in a user. Let's take that out. We'll, we'll, we'll get a string here. And let's say we're gonna call, um, we'll just call var is equal to new uh, user. And in order to do that, let's go require once here. I want to go require once. Let's make sure we have all of these in here. Right, we have all the classes we need. And now what we're going to do is interface is good. French, we can leave it in there. We can leave that in there. So in here, um, we just need to require the utility. And then this guy isn't going to be like this. We're going to say, um utility greet we have to pass it in as the exact class name save that whoops undefined variable utility call the number function greet not good so utility require utility utility function greet user Oops, utility is equal to new utility. Let's save that. Now let's reload this. Call the function on a non-object. That's likely because we're passing this in wrong. So we want English, we want French. And in the utility, greeting var is equal to add, because this should be var. And now if I reload this page, you'll see that I get hello and bonjour, right? Which is pretty cool because here, all we had to do was say utility, greet in English, utility, greet in French, and the utility actually acts as what's called a factory. Um, it's a design principle or design pattern rather. And so we pass in the type of user we want and we get this new user. Um, now, obviously, we would want to put some checks and balances in and around that because really, if we passed in something that didn't exist, you saw we'd get an error. But uh, the cool thing is this will handle actually creating the user uh, and then calling the greeting on it. Um, so anyways, that's how interfaces uh, are sometimes used more often than not, I guess, in my experience. Um, but the cool thing is it's, it's like a design contract. It guarantees that some method or property will be there um, and you can include properties. Um, I don't think you can just set the value on them. So that's it for interfaces. If you have any questions, again, please just post a comment, leave a thumbs up on YouTube if this helped you. Hopefully you're finding these educational and we'll see you for tutorial number six. Thanks very much for watching.